Despite being an absolute beast of a monitor when it comes to sheer performance, the Samsung Odyssey G7 does have some irritating issues that after a prolonged use, you may start to really hate. The Samsung Odyssey G7 is, and I've said this many, many times, is a brilliant monitor in this price range for this format. It's still one of the best you can buy and it's getting cheaper. But these are experience issues that um, really can start bugging you after a while. So without further ado, I'm going to go into 10 things about the Samsung Odyssey G7 that I have started to hate after prolonged use. Number one, the menu interaction nipple is extremely tacky. It doesn't feel very high quality. The actual button itself, so you push it in to select and then you have a navigation left, right, up, down system. While you are selecting things, you'll find yourself selecting or going up instead of selecting, down, left. It's just not very good. It's um, it feels tacky, it doesn't feel very high quality. You're, you're clicking the, the select button to bring up the menu. It takes a couple of seconds for it to, to actually respond. I don't like it. Number two, the curve glare. Now, nature of the curve, no matter where you have a light source from behind the monitor, it's gonna reflect and it's kind of going to sort of converge onto this point here, right in front of you, into your eyes, <laughs> no matter what you do you can have any light source behind the monitor, you will see it. You really have to work hard to get those glares not to bother you. And I find this really difficult, given I've got two windows behind me, I wanna get some sunlight inside, can't do it. You have this problem with flat panels as well. But as I say, it's the nature of the curve, it's going to uh, reflect everything and converge it back to you. So even if you have light sources in different places, you will notice them and they will cause a really awful, irritating reflection. Number three is the auto switch slash um, auto power mechanism or whatever you want to call it. You've got a setting in here for for setting it, uh, turning it on to auto switch. What happens is while you are using one uh, one or two sources, no problem. As soon as you take um, the the lead out from one of your sources so that you want to start using your other source, you'd expect it to automatically notice that you've done that and you still have one live source which is switch. No, it has a mind of its own. Sometimes it works, but most of the time it'll just decide there is no further work to be done here. I'm going to switch off or I'm just going to tell you that there is no source at all. Very irritating. So you then have to go into manually trying to select the correct uh, source and now you're back to trying to use that awful tacky nipple that I was talking about that we do not like. So it's a vicious circle. You get more and more aggravated. Now, all of this aside, yeah, no issues while you're in source. It's just really annoying. To add to the annoyance, when you switch your computer on or your source, the monitor will not turn on. It doesn't, for some reason, register that there's a power source on, so I should turn back on, uh, I should turn on as well. No, it'll just sit there in standby mode until you have to once again hit that tacky nipple and try and get it to turn on. You find yourself clicking it over and over again, thinking, has it registered or not? Sometimes I've even gone band, uh, gone as far as turning the, the, the actual uh, mains power on and off for it to get it to, to start up and then it takes about five to 10 seconds before it actually starts up. Very annoying. Once you get it going though, bring the monitor. Number four, um, we have an eye saver mode on this monitor. Good option to have. Um, some have a text mode. Some monitors have uh, something called an eye saver mode, which is what we've got here. I like it, it's good. It turns, um, it turns down the glare, it turns down the brightness, it turns down the colors, makes it all warmer, less blue light, all good. Once you turn it on though, you cannot adjust the brightness. So if you turn it on during the daytime and you wanted to make it a little bit brighter so you can actually see what you're doing, can't do it. Equally, at night, if you want to turn it on, you're just going through some, some browsing, you're reading some, some, uh, some emails, you want to turn the brightness down a little bit, can't do it. The brightness function, you don't need. You turn the eye saver mode on, they'll do the brightness for you. There you go. Another very silly issue uh, that Samsung have just created because of their uh, because of their software. Number five. Um, this is one of the, the biggest issues that everybody has with this monitor when it comes to actually purchasing it because everyone's really worried about scan lines and the flickering issue. Now, 
I'm going to bundle this in together with the firmware issue. It is a problem. Uh, Samsung keeps releasing a new version of firmware. I've got now 1014.1. So I think that's 14 versions in since this monitor was released. To date, um, there is no clear guarantee with any firmware update that the scan line slash flickering issue has been resolved. In fact, Samsung don't even tell you most of the time what the uh, update is actually doing. Um, and if you reach out to Samsung and ask them, well, what is this update going to do? They just, they'll just say, cannot receive, release any information at this stage. It will just enhance your user experience. And then despite all of that, the enhanced user experience, whatever they mean by that, we still have a scan line issue. So you go to these uh, exact pages. I've put the links here. You will notice the flickering and the scan line issues. Um, a lot of people have been experiencing this. I have experienced it um, only on these links. To be clear, never in game, never in normal use. I only noticed it when I went on these specific uh, pages to make the issue appear. Um, and it stays there. Adaptive sync on, off, VRR control on, off, different FPSs. I can't make it go away. So it's still there. It is an issue. Just to be clear, it never happens in game. I've never experienced it in any other place apart from these particular pages themselves. So it's annoying just to know that that issue exists and it's something that Samsung have not been able to fix. Number six, HDR. Yeah, this monitor is an HDR. And to be fair, this is not just a uh, Samsung Odyssey G7 issue. A lot of manufacturers with monitors that have subpar capabilities when it comes to HDR, just keep branding that they achieve HDR. And then when you turn HDR on, it doesn't really work. And so many of us are confused. What does HDR actually do? What does it mean? Monitors at this price range with four or five or six local dimming zones and not enough brightness, they are not HDR capable. And that's it. Samsung Odyssey G7, do not buy it if you want to experience HDR. Number seven, the core lighting. Quite pretty, very nice. You can see it there, those red lines. This goes actually hand in hand with the next point as well. Uh, number seven, core lighting. Number eight, the original stand. Now the stand is, is huge. It takes way too much space because it's a heavy monitor. It's got a curve, understand, whatever. All right, you take the stand off, you put it on a monitor mount. Now what happens? Because again of that interesting curved design we've got, Samsung give you this monitor uh, mount, VESA mount adapter. And what that does is completely covers up that lovely RGB at the back. Just bugs me that I've paid for a package that includes RGB and I can't actually see that RGB because of that uh, design. So another minor issue, it's, it's, it's not a huge issue. Again, nothing to do with performance, but it's, uh, it's annoying. Number nine is the space it takes. Um, it's a curved monitor. It's got a huge, um, yeah, it's, it's fat. <laughs> it's, it's fat monitor, there's no other way to put it. Um, if you're looking for space saving, I know I've gone through this many, many times before. This is not the monitor to go for. Um, go for a flat panel, go for the 27GP850, go for the MSI 274QRD, uh, QRF-QD, sorry. Um, go for a flat IPS panel, essentially. Most of them will take half the space that this monitor takes. Final point, <clears throat> number 10, the minimum brightness, not enough. Uh, max brightness, very good. So in sunny environments, you're laughing. Um, you're not gonna have any problems with, with the max brightness. It's a nice bright panel um, compared to others in this price range. Minimum brightness is just not low enough. When you're gaming at night or when you're watching something at night and you have all the lights off, it still feels too bright at the lowest minimum brightness setting, unfortunately. So what I have to do is I still have to have my background lights here turned on just to have that sort of lighting in the background behind the monitor, to not hurt my eyes um, and just make it a better experience. But yeah, sometimes you just wanna have nothing but the screen, but unfortunately the minimum brightness is just not enough. And that's it. 10 things I really started to dislike about this monitor. Um, after prolonged use, as I said, it's still a beast of a monitor. You just start getting annoyed with these with these issues. The Odyssey G7, it's still a very good monitor for this price. And really, um, if you're looking for performance, 
Apart from the new QD OLED panels that are coming from Alienware, the Samsung G, uh, Neo G8, um, the MSI uh, OLED uh, monitors coming out, there isn't really anything in the IPS world that can beat this monitor in terms of shared performance. So that still stands, nothing changes there. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and hey, come on, give us some subscribe. Some of you have uh, really helped the community with all your comments. Thank you very much. We've got 50,000 views on some of our videos, but uh, we're not getting enough subscribers. So we really appreciate it if you could give us a like and a subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.